So using scales to generate melody. So some kind of use for scales. If, you, if you're one of those, you know, who people who think um, who get a little bored of, with scales, then I hope this kind of excites you a little bit. Get gets you excited about scales because scales are a really great resource, a really great building block for generating melody. And I'm using this word generate melody because as you'll see, there's just there's so many ways to create melody and I'm using these processes. So just in case you're not aware of what scales are, uh, a scale in a nutshell is a collection of notes that move up or down by step and have the same starting and ending note. A scale contains seven different notes, which is the number of completeness before it moves back to the first note, making the number eight the number of new beginning. We tend to use only two kinds of scales in classical guitar music, major and minor. And these two scales differ mostly from just one note, which is the third above the root note. So if the third is a major third, above the root, we get a major scale. So that's the C to the E there. And if the third is flat, if we get a minor third, then we get a minor scale. All right, there we go. So I say here, it's well worth practicing major and minor scales in some different keys so that you become fluent with them, especially the scale of the key your piece is in. And then I've given you an appendix uh, with some scales to practice, <clears throat> excuse me, if you would, um, you know, if you don't have scales already that you use, although you can use your own scales if, you're, if you already have scales that you practice. Okay, so there is a really brief tour of what's just the theory behind scales. So now we'll get start to get to the more exciting part here. So how can we use scales to compose, to generate melody? We can do something um, called using a scale segment. So we can take very small segments or portions of a scale, little groups, and they can plant the seeds to grow into a beautiful melody. So if you simply put a number, assign a number to each note of your scale, this first step, then you'll start to be able to create segments by taking different numbers of the scale. So here I've taken segment one, two, three, right? So if we just take this a very, very basic segment, just the first three notes of the scale, right? And we could use that segment and, and sequence it up. So we can repeat that segment up a step. And that's what that would sound like there. And then up another step. And up another step. Right, it's already starting to sound a little bit like a melody just by taking that little segment and repeating it up. Okay, and then you can play around with, I mean, there's, there's so many possibilities here. I'm just giving you a little tiny idea of what you can do. You can play around with these segments by changing direction. So here I've got a segment going up and then back. And then starting on four, note four, going down to two and up back to three. So... sort of doing a very similar thing but starting on a different place using a segment okay so that just gives you a very very quick idea of what I'm talking about here with scale segments and next we're going to look at scale segments as they appear in pieces of music maybe I'll just check the comments here does the C minor scale have a B flat um, the key of C minor does have a B flat in it, but a minor scale uh, usually raises the seventh note, and in the scale of C, the seventh note is a B. So we usually get a B natural. It depends on what kind of minor scale you're using. If you're using a harmonic minor scale, it'll be B natural. If you're using melodic, you'll be used both B natural and B flat. 
So let's get back on track here. So we're going to look at how these scale segments are used in pieces. So we're going back to the Mertz Andante, right? This one, which is which was used uh, a lot in the first workshop as a bit of a model piece. So here I've taken the melody and I've just put numbers on um, to identify the scale segments. So you can see in the first uh, part of the melody here, in the first phrase, he's just using the scale segment three to four, a very small segment. Um, it's in the key of C major. So C would be one. So C, D, E. So three is E. And then F is four. So we have three, 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 four. In the next melody, we get a segment going down from six to three. So six, five, four, three. And then we get a little segment going up seven, eight. Okay, and now this is a parallel period, which a lot of you will be a bit more familiar with now, I think, because this here repeats, same material, and then it ends a little differently, but we get these two little scale segments to end, so it goes back to three, up to four, and then six, five, and then seven, eight. Okay, so there's, there are some scale segments in the Merz Andante. Here are some more examples, a couple of more, maybe more well-known pieces. And, you know, I hope that this gives you a new lens on, on um, looking at melodies in, in relation to scales and a benefit for, for practicing scales and knowing your scales really fluently. So, this is Spanish Romance. I'll play this little excerpt for you. Okay, so I've put the scale segments up the top here, five going down to four, three, two, one. So if I play that for you, five, four, three, two, one. So that melody at the start there is made up of a scale segment, five, four, three, two, one. So we could take the scale of E melodic minor, high register here to match the melody and then the, those bracketed notes there is what Spanish Romance is using at the beginning but going down descending okay so scale segment you know in minor um, here's one a lot of you are familiar with and some of you have chosen actually as your model piece so La Grima this also uses scale segments in the melody so this time I'll play the scale first and then I'll play the melody for you so E major. All right, so that gives you a, a bit of a bearing there. And then I'll play the melody of La Grima, so it goes three, four, five. And then it, it drops, we get a leap there, which we'll, we'll talk about this like the use of scales and leaps. And then it repeats three, four, five again. And then we get the leap going back down. And then we get another scale segment, eight, seven, six, five. Okay, beautiful little scale segments there. Well, deceptively simple, really, very elegantly simple. So let me play you this excerpt again in full. Have a listen to those scale segments in the melody. playing, you know, it might help you to sort of group notes together and, and phrase them differently when you start seeing these scale segments. And obviously, from a compositional point of view, it gives you many possibilities, which we'll be looking at very soon. Okay, so your first task, you're going to have quite a few tasks again, <laughs> which, which will be really fun to see you do, is to create a scale segment and sequence it up or down three times. 
And if you want to, you can try and develop your segment or combine it with other segments. Um, this is quite open now. All right, there's lots of possibilities here. Okay, so you know you could really you could fill this page very easily with with all sorts of possibilities, and that's that's the point. You're starting to you, you're kind of using the language of music, right? You're kind of practicing the language of music when you do exercises like this, and then you'll find yourself maybe gravitating towards certain scale segments that you like, and then maybe they will be part of your melody. But even if they're not, you just, you have all of these different uh, sort of words, musical words that you, you can practice using scale segments. Okay, so there's your first task.